Apparently, the only employment we care about now are the bureaucrats hired to check up on all the rest of us. The bureaucrats who are hired to monitor us and make sure we're acting within the parameters of whatever Queen Nancy and King Barack set up for us. The monitor uh, staffing. Well, that's certainly on the rise in America. And so you're going to have the Health Insurance Board. They call it ICE. That's the, the acronym is ICE. It's like the British NICE, because Britain has the same thing, National Institute for what a comprehensive something. But they call it NICE, and it's anything but, because basically it tells Grandma that, you know, it's a, you, just have, you have to embrace death. I want you to hear that soundbite again, where President Obama is, was asked yesterday about end-of-life issues. Okay, now I want you to listen very closely. Let's play the whole soundbite. Let's listen. The most important thing we can do on end of life care right now is to make sure that we're empowering everybody to make decisions for themselves about how Flight of hand. they Not want doing to deal that. with the end of life. And to encourage people to, to look at hospices as a legitimate option for, for dealing with these issues. Okay. Did you hear what he did in that those two sentences? What We have to ensure that people have choices in dealing with these difficult end-of-life issues. Then the second sentence, we have to embrace hospices. And I'm not, I'm not you know, saying anything one way or another about hospices, but it sounds like he's making the choice for us. To look at hospices yeah. as a legitimate option. Embrace death. So that's where we are. That, that, and he, I think he's going to regret having said that. I think President Obama is going to wish he hadn't said that. Embrace death. That is the translation here. Embrace death. You know what we used to think in America? We used to think that we have a fighting spirit. We used to think that, look, we like being number one. We believe our children's future is going to be better than ours. And we're going to do everything in our power, everything, to make sure that businesses want to come here, they want to grow, expand, hire, we are going to be tops on research and development. We're going to graduate the smartest uh, students. We are going to make sure we have, a, uh, have students who uh, graduate with engineering degrees and science degrees, and we're going to reward success. We used to think that in America. And part of that can-do spirit, not the yes-we-can spirit, which is phony. The can-do spirit means that, yeah, until the end, until you know it's really the end, you're going to fight. Let me tell you, my mother had lung cancer. This was 10 years ago. It was a bad situation, no doubt. She had maybe a 15% chance of, of surviving it if they had caught, you know, this is complicated. I don't go into all the details, but it was a tough, tough situation. There was, it came a point in time where the chemotherapy wasn't working. And believe me, President Obama, we know when that happens, okay? We cancer survivors, we call ourselves thrivers because we are fighters. We know when it's not working anymore. We don't need you to tell us that we need to embrace death, okay? Because we fight until the end. And I think that little snippet that we just heard is really telling about where they're going to take this country. This is not about being number one. Meanwhile, China's economic growth, oh, that was just reported at 7.9%. So at least China is prospering as we are being told to lower our expectations. In, in, in the economy, we're supposed to lower ex our expectations. For our children's future, we're supposed to lower our expectations. For how much we're going to take home of our own uh, salaries, we're supposed to lower our expectation. And at the end of our life, we're supposed to lower our expectation of how long we can live because of this cockamamie idea that we all need to level the playing field, universal right, make sure that the rich pay hundreds of thousands of dollars more in taxes when they're already being soaked. These people have got to be stopped. These people have got to be stopped. If they're not, you will not recognize this country that you love. You're going to look back on this moment and you're going to say, Darn it, I wish I had done something. I wish I had had my own you know, neighborhood meeting on this. I wish I had uh, done a chat room and tried to get folks organized. I wish I had picked up the phone. I wish I had gotten involved. You know, I, I have been on this case now for, for many weeks. This is the critical juncture. We must, as a country, reject what is a wholesale takeover of our free market, which is, a, without a doubt, 
destroying true freedom of choice in, in America. You will not have the ability to choose the type of health care you want. Those days are over. Don't believe what they're putting on the front of the cereal box. Don't believe that. It's not going to happen. You will have less care, you will end up paying more money in taxes, and you will rue the day that good people did nothing to stop this. And this is a message for Olympia Snow and Charles Grassley and all the other uh, Republicans that went to the White House yesterday for their sit down with Barack Obama. You swore to uphold the Constitution and defend this country in the way you represent your states. Why don't you start doing that? Don't fall all over yourselves to make some type of compromise with Max Baucus and Nancy Pelosi so you feel like you can tap pat yourselves on the back and say, oh, I'm a different type of politician. If you do that, you will ensure that the Democrats have cover for this disastrous path they're taking us down. The situation in Washington is sick. You better believe it. It's very sick. We're going to take a, take a break on The Laura Ingram Show. Wendy Long's coming up of the Judicial Confirmation Network. We're going to talk about how Sotomayor has uh, bobbed and weaved. And uh, she doesn't even know Perry Mason, and that was supposed to be where she learned the law, so I'm a little concerned about that. A lot more, 800-876-4123. I just want to put everybody on notice. What we have to do is compare doing nothing with doing something. We are going to get this done. You had to be a big shot did you? All your friends were so knocked out. You had to have the last word last night. You know what everything's about. The Laura Ingram Show. White hot spotlight. You had to be a big shot last night. Whoa. We spend a huge amount of money in that last year of life, certainly under Medicare. And uh, you know, my hope is that as a culture and as a society, we're going to be able to uh, have a in-depth discussion, and more and more people are going to say, now, "I don't want people poking tubes and you know, uh, doing all sorts of stuff to, to my body. I want to find a way where I can control." this end-of-life process in a dignified way that's good for my family. D-E-A-D. -E he hopes that you embrace death happily. Well, as long as Mother Robinson is going to be on that same path. I mean, is, that, is he going to have all of the extended family, the Obama extended family, Michelle's mother, everybody else, all the old folks? How about Grandma Obama in Kenya? Is she going to be on this? We're going to bring her to the United States and... Say, okay, Grandma, look, it's, it's when you visit here, we just can't, we don't want to stick a bunch of tubes in you. I don't know, you got a cough. It's, it might be time to just embrace death happily. Does this terrify any of you as it terrifies me? Am I insane here? I'm listening to this thinking, we have now gotten to the point where it is the, the movie The Island. Do you remember that movie The Island? And I wrote about this in Power of the People. It was a, a film done by Michael Bay. It was starring Ewan McGregor and Scarlett Johansson. Now, it was set in the near future, and the film depicted residents of an isolated compound who've been cloned as full-grown adults so that their organs and body parts can be harvested. It's the latest in all the, you know, the futuristic cosmetic procedures. And the rich, rich elites on the outside of the compound can just abuse their bodies, do whatever they want to to themselves, because they know that they're going to be, they're going to have at their disposal anyone's organs they want. And it's just, this, I know this sounds like far fetched, but when you say to a certain group of people, "No, it's time to give up," although he's kind of saying that to all of us when it comes to the economy. When you say, to, "Well, just you just need to embrace it," I hope he says he hopes that you all, you know, essentially put people in hospices. And stop draining the system. These are the people, by the way, who work their entire lives. Most of these people work so hard their entire lives. And get, why don't you get your hands off their bodies? We know we spend a huge amount of money in that last year of life. Well, that's true. Well, we do spend a lot of money in the last year of life. But you know something? These people actually lived lives and, and worked hard and paid taxes. And it's not up to you. And in some government board 
whether you call it ice or nice, to tell them that they just need to shuffle off their mortal coils.